You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to wander around. Hey, we all know that we're going to die, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome to Mission Spooky 2023, Episode 1. I'm your fantastic host, JC. With me today, as per usual, the queen of everything herself, Kiki, and our local cryptid enthusiast, Cord the Rassler. How you guys doing today? You came on there with the same energy that, like, Marilyn Monroe sang happy birthday to JFK, dude. I do what I can. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome to Mission Spooky. <laughs> I figured 2023 is the year I'm going to be sexy, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> sexy JC year. Also, starting off the year perfectly by giving the wrong episode number. No, <laughs> it's it's episode one of 2023. Oh, okay. That's, that's why I said it's... Okay. Just so we're clear. I know, I know this isn't the first... <laughs> You know I was there. Welcome to episode one. The, the like seventeen years the ago. Flagship we... episode. Of years our... <laughs> Welcome to uh, season four of Mission Spooky, episode ninety-two. So is this episode one of season four? This is episode ninety-two. We break it up into seasons only because of iTunes. <laughs> but then it doesn't. It doesn't like we're if we, we are don't doing restart the cat. Cat- no. No, I'm gonna have no, words. no, we're doing you're, exactly you're the same thing. Strongly worded letter. Good. Email it to fuck around and find out at yahoo.com. I wonder who has that email. <laughs> Probably somebody in Philly. <laughs> Probably the guy Guaranteed. that fucked up the robot. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do the same thing that every other podcast has to do because iTunes is weird and likes things to be like in seasons. It's It's bizarre. Yeah. Well. Any New Year's resolutions for you guys? No, I don't believe in those. Cordy Poo, how about you? I'm perfect. I don't need to change anything. There you go. That's fair. Man, you guys have waited patiently for us to return. It's been about a month. One week. Nope. It's been about a month. <laughs> no, it's been about yeah. one week since you looked at me. Wow. Uh, I'm not and doing it. And now that song is stuck in everyone's not doing head. It. That's all I had to say. That's all I had to say. And then it's stuck. It's there. <laughs> Thanks, bare naked ladies. It doesn't get stuck in my head until somebody says, It's man. You can say, <laughs> Oh boy. In all you want. You have to say, It's man. <laughs> then, it, then, then it gets stuck in my head. <laughs> nice. I would take a quick opportunity to thank Edward October and uh, JT from Brew Crime, who put out the wonderful Friday the 13th episode for all of us who were on hiatus. We're going to be doing something similar to that with them hopefully for an april fools episode very cool if you're not already listening to edward october october pod please go do so and uh, jt at brew crime is also a fellow uncg graduate hell yeah found that out while i was on vacation in north carolina so it was a lot of fun i hope you guys enjoyed it but um i'm gonna start off the year right because i've got some beef with a particular podcast that has a huge following and it just worked out perfectly because uh i I already want to talk about a couple of these things and so yeah so we talking shit today is what you're saying yeah we're gonna talk shit we're gonna put some some shit straight because it's bad i'm not gonna throw them directly into the bus because they have like you know fourteen thousand followers on instagram which also only pisses me off because if you continue to put junk out that's either completely false or like inaccurate then yeah you're, you're sending it, that out to the masses and then they're just you know they just think that that's true the last two memes were pretty egregious and i finally stopped correcting them and instead just stopped following them because it seems as though folks following them also just don't care you know if the memes are incorrect or not and i'm just done correcting all their mistakes instead we're going to talk about it today because they're actually two of them are actually kind of fun and they tie directly into what my subject was gonna be for today anyway so 
just serendipity. I'm going to get into the first meme. We're, we're not going to have a sponsor for today because I decided since y'all waited so long to get here that it's a freebie. Okay, so no commercials. You guys are going to freaking love this first one. It's awesome. This one, I actually can't believe that anybody would still put out as being true because it's been lauded as a fake now for quite some time. I like to preemptively, though, say that I think the folks who follow us know that I draw the line pretty easily between comedy and like just throwing things out there for the possible shock value. Like we don't do that. It, it, I read history. I tell you guys the facts. We don't put any crap out. Right. If we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you. So if I put a meme out there and you folks are going to know when I'm joking about it and when I'm not, <laughs> I just want to make that clear. Right. Because we've we do paranormal research. It's we also don't take ourselves seriously. Well, some of us do paranormal research. I take myself extremely seriously. Anyway, when I tell you what the what the meme is, you guys are going to just you're going to love it. Just just hold on. OK. Show me the meme. Okay. So the meme in question has a picture of a whip made of human spinal bones and supposedly found in a basement in Wyoming. The meme started going around in 2019 and it has been proven to be a fake story because, well, I'll get to that in a minute. As someone trained in physical anthropology, I was not going to let this one go though because... If you look at the whip, there's no possible way that it could be from one human being. It'd have to be at least four different people. That makes it even more metal. I don't know. Well, oh, wait, wait for it. And considering the size of the whip, okay. Uh, okay, I have back up for one second because this also says a lot about how our school systems are not teaching people about human anatomy because I'm sorry, you should just know by looking at how long the whip is and the various sizes of the the vertebrae it's not possible that it's just one person but most people don't apparently know their own bodies and are like oh yeah that came from just one person okay no not only that it have to come from at least four people of various sizes themselves and i mean from infant to adult which kind of makes it even worse <laughs> you know than it's just like oh this was found in wyoming and it came from a person it's like no it did it came from like at least four different people and one of them had to be an infant you idiot <laughs> that's gross yeah it's not it's not great <laughs> no it's not great <laughs> well it turns out that this is actually a movie prop from the 2014 film hercules starring the rock yeah, you can actually see this whip being used in several shots during the film. Heck, a Google search will reveal that to you instantly. <laughs> you have a picture of this meme? Can I see this meme? Ugh, can you not Google? Oh my god, okay. Bone. If it means anything, whip. I successfully Googled it. Uh, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> well then, JC, you're not talking. Send me the meme. <laughs> Hold on. I ungoogled it. I don't know. Like, I looked at it, said I was done with it, and then moved on with my life. Don't ungoogle things. Co Let me see if I can copy it. And Just then, open like... another tab. You don't ungoogle anything. Ever. You never close out of tabs. Have you general, not used the internet before? General chats. Where's general chat? There it is. I've only seen that movie once, but I definitely recognize that prop. See, like it's recognizable. It's come on, man. Like, ugh. Mm. anyway, my, my feelings is that most people just don't want to do the extra work. And it's really sad if you're like a major podcast with all these followers and you're putting out memes that are completely fake and have been fake for fucking years. <sighs> now, uh. I'm also I'm just going to say I'm also not an expert in whips. And I know that there's going to be a lot of disappointment out there about that. But Literally, no one's disappointed in that. No one listening right now is disappointed. Are you sure? Because I've been told I have a really sexy voice, and I feel like they want me to be an expert in whips as well. I'm just no, just saying. No, well, with JC's intro, maybe he should be the whip expert this year. Oh, that's maybe. true. Yeah, yeah. JC's bringing the sexy in 2023. I forgot. <laughs> He's bringing um, sexy back. I expect um, some kind of reference to a whip now, like every single beginning of oh, every Lord. episode. Okay. I'm sorry, JC. Yeah. I don't know how to you tell you this, this on yourself. But you better. Um, we we better just set the expectations now. It, it's always low, anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna happen. 
I will forget about this literally okay, also, a minute from now. Cord, I expected you to have a joke by the end of this episode because you said you would have a funny joke or pun like every time from now on. And I think you've forgotten your duties. Heh, <laughs> duty. Fuck. Yeah, do you not have like a, a joke for us? Oh, man. <laughs> well, it's on now. Listen, I'll give you to the end of the episode. Doesn't have to be the I beginning. Won't. Could be like whenever. So uh, some people have pointed out that perhaps the closest thing to this bone whip, but still very far away from said bone whip, is the Chinese chain whip, which takes years of practice to wield efficiently because it's not made of a pliable material. So you don't, quote, crack it. Um, yeah, look up yeah, Chinese uh, chain whip. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, it's not really so much a, a whip in the sense of what people are thinking a whip is. <laughs> right. But Right. That's what I'm saying. It's pretty far away from it. But however, I understand the same concept from the whip community uh, is that. And the first thing I thought, too, is that the whip fandom, if you would. Right. This isn't really going to hurt people. Also, I, I mean, spinal column bones are pretty decent, but you're only going to crack that thing a couple of times at people and you're going to see some shattering. So I, I especially on the smaller bones. Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, it's it's definitely a resin based item. It's not real bones. Like, duh. Like, yeah, you should know that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh fuck. And then people were people commented on him like, oh, I'm not going to Wyoming. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. It, uh, yeah, why'd they pick Wyoming? Did they think because not a lot of people live there? I, I don't. Uh, I don't know. Is it because of Devil's Tower in Wyoming? It seems like a strange state to just be like. Was Wait, wasn't that where anyway. the body the the guy that did the the why oh, can't I think of his fucking name? Maybe not a serial killer, but like made a bunch of stuff out of human parts. You're talking about Ed Gein. I'm pretty sure that's Wisconsin. But... Yeah, that's Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, different W. You know, maybe somebody did want to say Wisconsin, but messed up. I don't know. Maybe I knew they it was you. I do the best I can, guys. Maybe they wanted to say Wisconsin, but went, oh, wait, no, there's already a, a <laughs> spooky dude making body parts in Wisconsin. Let's just change the state real quick. And they were making up this <laughs> fake name. <laughs> or honestly, they just feel like, like, I feel like people don't know the geography of their own country. So, you know, <laughs> there we go. Debunked. There's no whip made out of human spine. It's not real. <sighs> I say that out of the way. Now, the next thing is actually a lot more interesting and also speaks to me as a physical anthropologist because I love this shit. The next meme involved my favorite founding father and proud Philadelphian and brought up an interesting story that has been covered in depth, as in there are multiple documentaries about this find. <laughs> And that is the bones found in the, quote, basement of Ben Franklin's London home. Now, this meme kind of pisses me off only because the story is so big and interesting that you can't fit all of the nuances of it in a single square Instagram meme. As with most things. As yes. with most yeah. things. <laughs> Thank you. And the responses from folks were exactly what you would imagine if you're just getting a snippet of the story. And it's being told to you in an Instagram meme. What do you think, guys, some of the very first comments were about finding out that there were, quote, bones in the basement of Ben Franklin's London home? Uh, ben Franklin did it. He's the murderer. But since it's multiple bones, right, which would indicate people, more specifically, he's a... Uh, he's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he re he really hates Lucky Charms because he's a serial killer. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I was waiting. Ah. Yeah, there it is, baby. How dare anyone say that Ben Franklin is a serial killer? That is, what in the actual fuck? Yeah, Frosted Flakes weren't even invented back then. Exactly. Actually, I'm just going to start throwing up like my own Instagram memes like that. Like, Ben Franklin made... Discovered how to make frosted flakes. <laughs> George, Washi bullshit. George Washington invented boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. How do you think he got across the Delaware River? He needed a way to cross the river. He Dude. invented boats. <laughs> yeah, I mean everybody knows that. Duh. There's a painting about it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I killed I killed no. Cord. <laughs> no. Yes. First good <laughs> belly laugh of 2023. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's get into this. Yeah. Let's look into how to make um the whips. Yeah, I want to mm-hmm. let's go back to the whip. Let's go back to the whip. <laughs> Dude, I could make that. I've got I think I've been well, I've I've got a lot of snake arts work and around. crafts with Kiki. <laughs> there you go. We brought it back around to our possible <laughs> new arts and crafts. Five minute arts and crafts, right? We we should be doing this. We should be making up spooky arts and crafts bullshit that doesn't make any sense. It's fun to do though. Hell yeah. To be fair, if you could make a bone whip in five minutes, you're a talented motherfucker. Like you deserve things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve things. Good <laughs> good statement, bud. I do what I can. With God's love, I do what I can. <laughs> All things are possible. Yes. Okay, so which God though? Any of them. It doesn't matter what God loves you as long as a God loves you. I prefer the God cord, of course. Of course. I mean that makes strength. No, For that all- makes sense. That I makes mean, strength. Makes- yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, he's the god of strength. All right. So the Benjamin Franklin House is a museum located at 36 Craven Street. I love that. I want to live there. And it is in London. It is the last standing former residence of Benjamin Franklin. The house dates from 1730 and Franklin lived there and worked from there for 16 years. But he wasn't alone. He did have a housemate named William Hewson. So conservation of the Franklin House begins in 1998. It is brought to a halt with the discovery of both human and animal bones found under the floor of what was the seminar room. This room was originally where the garden was when Franklin lived there. A coroner determined the bones were over 100 years old, and therefore they did not require an inquest, which is used to determine the cause of death. So they're too old, they're going to bypass that inquest. However, the Franklin House team invited Dr. Simon Hilson from the London Institute of Archaeology at the University College of London, and that just sounds like a mouthful and a fucking half. Sure does. <laughs> to conduct research on the bones, which yielded valuable historic information. The 1,200 bone fragments appear to be from an anatomy school run from the house by William Hewson. Hewson was the son-in-law of Franklin's landlady, Margaret Stevenson. Hewson is best known for his groundbreaking research in blood and lymphatic system. He isolated the key protein of blood clotting process, for example. So he's no fly-by-night surgeon here. Uh, Hewson trained in Edinburgh under anatomist William Hunter. Unfortunately, the two men had a falling out. And at one point, Franklin became a mediator between the two of them. But from what I've read, it sounds like that was not successful. They did not speak to each other very much after their falling out. Well, Hewson eventually opens his own anatomy school at the house on Craven Street. The human remains were found to be from 15 individuals and showed signs of dissection marks from surgical instruments. One striking example was that of a femur that's cut very clean, which is probably done as a demonstration of proper amputation, which, of course, was a valuable skill on the battlefield. You know, this is before the Revolutionary War, so... That's a skill that's going to be used, unfortunately, a lot in the coming war. Skull pieces had clear signs of trepanation, which is when you take a drill and you make a hole in the skull to relieve pressure on the brain. I've seen quite a few of of these in person. You can tell right away. Like, you know, that's what that is. This is where I remind everyone that anesthetic was not used until 1846. (laughs) That's when men were real men, you know? anesthetic it's what it's what started the uh womanization of america (laughs) okay wow i mean think about it another 40 years feminism coincidence i think not (laughs) (laughs) i'm going to hell (laughs) you live in america you're already you know there's someone that's like no i could see the dots yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's why you shouldn't throw those conspiracy theories Jeez. out there. Jeez Louise. I just got done talking about how we should not. Uh, uh, wow. Kiki, do you think I listen to the words? I mean. No, I know. I know. You're over there in your own little world. I wish that we had cameras on us because I would love to see what he actually does like while we're talking. Oh, you don't. You don't want to see me. He's playing with the cat. 
you know, like fucking around. No, Hopper's not allowed in the room when I'm recording. That that doesn't go well. <laughs> he just tries to murder everything. That's the episodes when he goes mute for 45 minutes out of the hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Running around trying to corral a cat. A cat of pure chaos. All right. So the bone pit is going to yield a very interesting find that's going to Is it going this- to bring us to bones? <sighs> It's going <laughs> to link it directly back to Houston, and that is a part of a turtle spine that has Mercury. Boy, Mercury comes to play again. <laughs> it's really fucked up. Oh, man. This research just led from one thing to the next. It was great. So Houston had conducted an experiment for the Royal Society in 1770 in which a dead sea turtle, and I did find out that it was dead because it bothered me to think that he did this while it was alive. He injected it with mercury to highlight the lymphatic system. It was Franklin who helped get Houston elected to the Royal Society for which he received their Copley Award for his work. So good old Franklin helping out his friends. And of course, Franklin is a scientist himself. So all of this makes perfect sense. But the thing that people focus on in the story though is where the bodies came from well and kiki i think i have an answer to this when one man and one woman love each other very very much (laughs) (laughs) oh boy (sighs) that is not the bone that we're talking about but i've done research yeah lots of research (laughs) did you see the meme that i put up about you by the way (laughs) Yes, I liked it. This is Jeremy doing research. And it's just a dude looking in a dumpster or a bunch of dumpsters that are on fire. And it's, <laughs> they weren't know. on fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they will be. I wasn't that bad. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was a perfect meme. I also have a one with a bunch of girls who were like falling asleep together. It's really sweet. And it just says us waiting around for Matt Moneymaker to find Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you send that to me? I need that. You need an Instagram account. No, just Ford. send me the meme so I can save it on my phone and show people. I will. Like the you know what? And that I am. I will go ahead and upload all of the memes from Instagram right into Discord for people to see because we have a little area for that anyway. So, pfft, okay. And then you can see them. And then everybody else who doesn't have Instagram can also see them. That's a good point. But hey, let's get back to these dead bodies, shall we? (laughs) Okay, so again, the real issue here is where the bodies come from, because they could not be used in medicine legally, quote unquote, until 1832. So you have to look at it from this angle. The legality part did not extend to those who were executed. You could ask for those bodies with little to no resistance from any authority, be it religious or secular. Because keep in mind, those who were a part of religious face at the time, Christianity, you know, they did not want to use bodies for scientific purposes. They saw it as, you know, desecrating the body. But it just so happens that when this area was a garden, there was a high wall there. And right next to it is where public executions took place. Hey, <laughs> So it's not that much of a stretch to the imagination that Houston made friends with the gallows executioners and asked politely for the bodies. You think it was like a, a some kind of like a, a pie in, in as a trade? Like when I need to borrow my neighbor's lawnmower, I, I bake him a pie. Right. I was thinking it was probably like very, yes, very similar to that. Like, hey, listen, I know it might take a little bit of time to get here, but I know a guy. He owns a place across the pond called Ropes and Stuff. And <laughs> Ropes and Stuff. I can, I can get you a discount on your gallows ropes is what I'm saying. Just throw me the body over the wall because, you know, if they're dead. You don't got to carry it. Just literally toss it over into the garden. I'll, I'll pick it up. Paul's. It was Paul's Ropes and Stuff. Yes. Don't forget, Paul was the owner. It's very important. That is a callback to another episode in case you guys want to go. If you're coming in, if you're coming in on this one, Paul's Ropes and Stuff is from our episode 73, Getter's Island with Elise Schaefer. She is an artist herself. And and yes, she is also part of the Lehigh Valley Arts podcast. Anyway, and we've done crossover stuff with them too. Good, Good group of people. Anyway, yeah, so he's probably 
just asking for these bodies. Now, sure, it could have been resurrectionists. And we've touched on resurrectionists in our episode on Vampires of Pennsylvania. And we're going to be revisiting some American resurrectionists in a very, uh, probably the very next episode, actually. But here's the thing. Is Houston going to bother with illegal bodies when he can just get them like legally from right over the wall? Honestly, probably not. I don't think so. All the speculations about the legality of the bodies only arises because of Franklin's presence in the apartment complex, right? Like, I think he he rented the first floor apartments and something to that effect. So it, it looks like a brownstone, like from Philly is what it basically looks like um, with like three levels. They were saying something about the first floor apartment. So I think they actually mean like one up and then Houston was on the ground floor apartments and then would have had access to this garden. Anywho, <laughs> any Houston. Indeed, he did know that Houston's lab was there, but there's no evidence to support that either Houston or Franklin was involved in snatching corpses illegally. So get that out of your head, guys. Franklin was not a serial killer. Holy God. Holy cats. You mean in this instance? Cord. Maybe this was like his his thing, like his his way of getting out of it, you know, like, oh, no, why would I go around killing people? I could just ask my buddy over there who were very good friends if I could just get him. Oh, yeah, he asked me for bodies right now. It's amazing. Like to all me the how, time. Like I'm specifically talking about anti conspiracy theories in this episode. And you yeah. guys are just making shit up. Dude, we're on a roll. You can't stop us. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Don't stop. The, don't stop the love. Here we we did research, okay? How to piss Kiki off and derail her entire episode. She and her how? <laughs> I, and that's what we did research on. Yeah, you've been researching that for three years, and I've been doing pretty good. I'm writing yeah, a right. whole my doctorate <laughs> thesis on it. Fucking got him. <laughs> I don't believe one that you wrote anything yet. I didn't say I wrote. And two. That would imply that it's finished. I'm writing. I'm writing. I don't think that you can write. You can't read. How are you writing? Well, what I do is I take my face and I mash it against the keyboard and then I just roll around. Okay. And then I press the save button. Okay, guys. So <laughs> listen, <I'm laughs> the story ends, though, on a rather sad note. Houston will contract septicemia from a cut during one of his dissections. He died in 1774 at the age of 34, leaving behind his wife, Polly, two children, and a third one on the way. Franklin moves from London on the eve of the American Revolution. Polly will eventually move to Philadelphia to be near him, perhaps a testament to the good friend he was to Houston and his family. Or maybe she just wanted to bang him because everybody wanted to bang Ben Franklin. Legit. Legit. Yo, to be fair, though, dude was hot. But I was, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's the brain. He's so smart. He's so fucking smart. Oh, for me, it's just the size of his penis. <laughs> it's the bifocals, man. The sad part is that everybody always thinks of Ben Franklin from that one painting. They're like, oh, he's an old man. I'm like, he was young at one point and was pretty good looking from what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> what I've read. What I've read. Okay. And, and like, you and know. all French women loved him. Okay. So he had to have something going on there. He, well... You know, I, I said about the penis, but what I've read is like, while he looked kind of like nerdy, his personality was shocking. I hate you. He did the so lightning much. thing. He did the lightning on the key. See, see, there's a little history fact for you guys. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. I know. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to leave uh, without telling an actual ghost story. Hell yeah. And it does tie in very nicely with this particular theme of medicine and medical practices. <laughs> Whether you're pulling an entire spine out of a single human being to make a whip or using possible illegal cadavers to do awesome things with. And I only say awesome because there was a lot of great discoveries made by what Houston was doing. However, let's turn our attention to the Bishop White House in Philadelphia. Bishop White House is considered a National Historic Park. Right now, however, it is closed for renovations. I'm not sure when it's going to be open. It even says on the website they don't know exactly when it's going to reopen, but it will. It's personally a place I like to visit for an investigation. It sounds kind of intriguing, as I'm about to get into. The house was built in 1787 for William White. 
he is the first consecrated bishop of the Episcopal Church. Bishop White was a prominent Philadelphian. He's upper middle class. And the museum contains many of his personal items and reflects that upper middle class status. So it's supposed to be very much like stepping back in time to see how folks of that stature lived during that time. It even has the book that he was supposedly reading right before he passed away in the home in 1836. But it's not his ghost that is the prominent spirit in the home. Instead, it is a shadow man that most people believe is White's coachman named John. What we know of John is that he was a free black man. He was hired by White and that he was very good friends with him. John lived in an apartment behind the White's house. Unfortunately, John would become a victim of the yellow fever outbreak in Philly in 1793. John gets treated by one of Philadelphia's most prominent doctors, Benjamin Rush. Rush represented Pennsylvania in signing the Declaration of Independence. Did he, did he do a Rush job? No. What's interesting is I had a, another little synchronicity happen. Rush is probably going to come up again in another story that involves William Shippen and the Shippen House. That's going to be later on this season. Actually, this season is turning out to be kind of fun because I'm able to tie a few ghost stories together with some other stuff that I want to talk about. So that's pretty neat. Are you implying that any of our seasons aren't fun? No, I meant that it's fun for me because they're tying in very nicely. So you don't have fun making yeah. the other seasons? No, they were grueling. A lot of them suck. Like, don't listen to episodes like, I don't know, 1 through 12. No, 1 through 10. Yeah, they're horrible. The audio is terrible, too. Anyway... <laughs> JC, you got to listen to just me and JC. There's no chord in many of those episodes. It's just, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Let's, let's be honest. Okay. To be fair, do we now? But, yes, sure. Oh. Absolutely. I'm a pro at this now. Makes one of us. Yeah, that's one of us. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So the point being is John is getting the best possible care that Bishop White can get him. These men are friends. So this isn't surprising. And Rush has all the traits of one of those heroic Philadelphians. He's anti-slavery, he's promoting women in education, and he is anti the death penalty. Unfortunately, Dr. Rush is also known for his practice of bloodletting mixed with using mercury in an attempt to cure yellow fever. Hell yeah, bloodletting. That's always worked, man. He is lauded for staying in Philadelphia during the crisis of the yellow fever, seeing over 100 patients a day including many freed slaves, but he winds up killing most of them through his ridiculous misuse of bloodletting and poison. Nah, that doesn't sound right. It's great. Let's just drain your blood and then replace it with mercury. You're going to mm -hmm. be fine. Yeah, that sounds be fine. Look, I'm not a scientist, nor do I have any background in medicine. But yeah, that sounds right. Okay, so to be fair, it doesn't sound like he's actually injecting folks with mercury. There's uh He's using a combination of like rubbing people down with mercury somehow and uh, another, I can't think of it. I didn't write it down because I wasn't even going to talk about it until I realized it probably does sound like he's injecting people with mercury, but that's not what he's doing. Let's just leave it at that. He is also called out by many of his colleagues for this, by the way. So a lot of other doctors in the area have already moved well on from bloodletting as a cure for anything other than just trying to kill somebody. If he's not alive, he's not sick. Sounds cured to me. <laughs> it's true. He is often accused of accidentally killing or hastening the death of George Washington and Ben Franklin. Oops. See what now I'm talking about? How he hurt? He hurt my dear Ben Franklin. Mm -mm. Possibly. Yep. Mm -mm. And he himself will demand to be bloodlet before his own death. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just. I know that, okay, so on one hand, you're probably like, well, it was a different time and bloodletting was seen as the best cure for yada, yada, yada. But when you read about Dr. Rush and realize that other people are beyond this and are like, no, we need to stop doing this because we think we're actually killing people faster. <laughs> like, let's not do this. Uh, Wait, are you going to tell the guy with the last name of Rush not to do something faster? Because that goes against his heritage. <laughs> right. <laughs> We got to get these guys dead faster. <laughs> yeah. You read about how George Washington passed away and he was bloodlet like three times. I mean, sorry, four times. And they also did other horrible things to him in, in a quote attempt to cure his problem, which he was saying that he had a sore throat. And so they 
put like irritants on his throat because that was another medical procedure. Oh, if it's irritated, you should irritate it more. <laughs> and that'll cure it. I mean, okay. Anyway, so interestingly, dying of bloodletting and mercury is not quite as terrible as one would think. You're going to have numbness in your hands and feet because of the mercury. You're going to have tremors and possible seizures from the mercury, along with dizziness, extreme thirst, and eventually death from prolonged exsanguination. So maybe it's no wonder that people who come in contact with what is considered to be the shade or shadow of John are not frightened by it, but instead feel pangs of great sadness. He is not the only ghost that haunts the place. We also have Mrs. Boggs down in the kitchen. Uh, she is seen as more of a wispy white apparition. I'm sorry, wait, what was her name? Mrs. Boggs. You gonna make fun of her name? A little bit. I was, it's just kind of like, I had a few ideas, but I feel kind of bogged down. Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> is this how 2023 is going to play out? Like, holy shit balls. Mm, 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 mm. She was apparently more talked about by the family. Like, she shows up a couple of times in some letters back and forth, and she's the only helper in the house who's mentioned specifically in these letters. So it's interesting that we know that John is written of by other people as a very close friend of the families, but he's maybe not showing up in letters, whereas Mrs. Boggs in these family letters back and forth to each other, she's mentioned very specifically. So so it's possible that she's just very much tied to the house. Bishop White's ghost is also seen here, but it reminded me of, but it was in the episode we talked about one of the ghost tours from New Hope one of those houses where you just kind of see the woman standing in the window, but that's sort of impossible because there's something that's up against the window like now, you know, but back in the day, it probably wasn't there kind of thing. That's all that, that people will see of him that he's just staring out of the third uh, floor window with sort of a sad look on his face. But I, I always, this other thing is like, I don't with John and the sadness, instead of being afraid of it, that to me is an interesting and, and I don't know. It, it, for me, is more in the realm of possibility. But why does Bishop White have to be looking out the window sad? You know, because he led a very fulfilling life and did a lot of good for the community. And I just feel like, well, why is ha you know why does it have to be sad? What if he's just gazing out the window, looking out over the new Philadelphia? You know, I don't know. And lastly, and of course, you know, JC, you're gonna love this one is a ghost cat. I don't like it because that implies that cats might die. And I don't like that as a reality. So this is weird, though, because people will say that the cat belonged to Dr. Benjamin Rush. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, so did he did he bring the cat with him when he was accidentally killing John slowly or like what the yeah. fuck? The cat's like, I'll come. <laughs> of course, the cat came along. He's like, um, I want to see this. People will say that they've seen this cat lying down by a, a window. Of course, there are no cats living in the house currently, and there's no, quote, record of ever. I mean, we know that it was very difficult to own a cat back in the day because their litter boxes weren't really invented. I feel like it was not that long ago in history that we were able to have cats inside of a house because there wasn't a litter box. We hadn't really, you know, designed that yet. But I wanted to have a solid, <laughs> I wanted to have a solid date for it. And uh, <laughs> are you serious? Okay, so the 1940s <laughs> is technically when litter boxes came into fashion. That's crazy. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so otherwise cats, of course, did not live inside the home. You could have a cat, but you had to have a pretty extensive outside for them to hang out in, like a pretty big garden or farms had tons and tons of farm cats because in that way, you know, the cat or the invention of the cat door, they could let themselves out. That came later, too. But technically, you could bring the cat in at night and then leave the cat out in the morning and the cat did its business outside. So did the family have a cat? Probably not. The other thing is people will say they claim to hear the cat meowing inside a lot of times during a visit to the home. Yeah, I don't know why they would think it was Benjamin Rush's cat. And I honestly couldn't find any, just a lot of other horrible things about <laughs> I mean, Rush. that kind of goes with the theme of the 
episode, right? People just kind of like to say shit. So like, oh yeah, it was, it was just his cat. It was his cat, whatever. Yeah, right? That is what I have for you guys today. So what you've learned today is that uh, human spine, whip, not real. Fake. Ben Franklin, not a serial killer. Fake. And that the Bishop White House is a very interesting place with fake a very interesting past <laughs> <laughs> that unfortunately you can't quite visit right now but hopefully we'll have an update on that and, and it wasn't benjamin rush's cat it's not benjamin i don't think it's been benjamin rush's cat i think that's ridiculous and and you know it's funny as we we talked with paul Bestel a little bit about how cats are you know like they're kind of sneaky and like um you know, like, what if it is a cat? Like, it's just a living cat, but it's snuck in somewhere. I don't know. I'd believe it. All right. So um, we do have music for today. Dun, dun, dun. Our featured music today comes from Serpent Church. They're from South Carolina. And the song is called Wolves Plus Arrows. And when we get back. So, like, are the wolves shooting arrows now? Who trained these guys to shoot fucking bow and arrow? I did. <sighs> Good for you. When we get back, we'll do Spooky Squad News. is spooky or the squad is spooky this the news of us it's the news about the is spooky it, squad that's us is it spooky squad news or is it spooky squad news spooky squad news see spooky squad news we're we're okay. spooky squad and everybody yeah. that's listening is part of the squad we've made that like well i don't know after three four years <laughs> going into four years i would hope it was clear that all y'all listening are the squad you are our spooky squad. Is this how we're coming back? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. That is how we're coming back. We're just coming back on whether or not it's spooky squad news or spooky squad news or spooky squad news. Hashtag spooky squad. One word. News. That's how you find us. That's how you find members of the squad. Hashtag spooky squad. Follow that on Instagram. Thank you. Hell yeah. All I'm going to say about this particular subject is that one we have been holding off because our wonderful dm partners ben and logan had a lot of things shall we say to overcome the end of last year so we were really trying to get our next episodes of cord versus cryptid recorded by now but shit happens and they got a whole other podcast of their own to worry about. So good news is artwork's completed for the next two, which I'm very excited about. I know that Ben and Logan are both ready to go whenever we, uh, we figure out the timing of it. So definitely coming back with more TTRPG stuff. Secondly, kind of in a holding pattern at this point because of what's going on with the OGL. But we already figured out what we're going to do. So just follow us on Twitter still because i can't believe it's still actually up and running even though it's a shit show that's where most of those things are going on 
as far as like details of what's what we're going to do going forward. So wait, I just might not use 5e. I might be switching it over to something else is all. So not a big deal. We can get that done. You so could that's be where like we me are. and play 2e. Um, unfortunately, the OGL also um, includes that as well. The OGL debacle, I should say, was very clear that it includes everything from the new 1.0 backwards in time. So, yeah. Good for them. <laughs> I don't think, like, do people understand what corporations are? Like, it's a this is literally game. just yes. corporate being a corporation being a corporation. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to. If we're getting mad, it's our fault for allowing, like, to live in a corporate America. Like, that's that's your fault. Leave. Stop buying things corporations make. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> that's yeah, but sooner or later, the people that make new things are going to become corporations. And then you're just, you know, we're just, yeah. it's a never ending cycle. I thought we agreed we weren't going to talk about this. <laughs> I was just, I was oh, trying to give an update of like. America is a uh, hellscape. I'm going into America being a hellscape and how corporations in general are evil. And that's why right now I am intrigued by cobalt press wanting to do something that is not owned by them or a corporation but a third-party non-profit organization which would keep an ogl open for everyone in perpetuity i think that's a very good idea there's a lot i could do an entire episode on just that and we're not going to do that because we're not a solely ttrpg podcast so i don't have to do that but i do want to mention that we might be changing a few things going forward with rules but that's only because you know they done did it to themselves so and as you said we have a choice and uh since i'm the producer yeah that's the choice we're going to make is to leave D, D behind so Oof. yeah that's hard because you know i've been playing since literally the beginning of time yes because you uh, were there there you go i was i was sticking was, that in there for you yes she was there over Tolkien's shoulder as he was writing the books. She the actually thing. helped because like Tolkien got a lot of his ideas from like mythology. She helped write that. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah, was there. <laughs> and then I was Guy Gax's like copy editor afterwards. So. Yeah, sounds about right. So anyway, that's the update on Core versus Cryptid. And then uh well, wait until you see the designs, man. I just have to say that um Ash who is doing the cute version of the cryptids really blew it out of the water again. <laughs> They're just adorable. I love them. Hell yes. I know. And they can't come out until after the freaking episodes come out. <laughs> well, ding dang it. Let's go. I know. We'll get on it. We'll get on it. Hopefully y'all have noticed that we updated our Instagram look and everything is, it's all sparkly new. I've got all these really cool templates and we're doing some neat things like Mondays. I do New Music Mondays, where I have Spotify playlists that are around and inspired by the musicians who've already played on the show. And Friday is our funny meme day. So that's fun Friday. And Saturday and Sunday, again, are kind of designated to whatever might be going on. Or either day, if we don't drop something, then uh, I'm also suggesting books, like new books. And I've got these cool little reading challenges based on authors. Although I did just put one out for Quill and Crow Press or publishing. Just got done reading one of their advanced reader copies that I was it's very, very good. And uh, I have a friend who actually writes them. So, you know, full disclosure, uh, I do have a friend that writes for them as well. But very good material. I'm not just saying that. It's, it was it was a lot of fun. So I have that one. And we, we started off our reading challenge with our good friend, Tim Renner, because everybody should have read all those books by now anyway. Yeah, buddy. So, or is that all reading a challenge to people? <laughs> Mostly just you, yeah. It, like, oh, well, okay. yeah. Reading is a challenge to most people because they don't do it, but I would say you're definitely exceptionally challenged by it. Cord and I are going to be on the Destroy All Podcast Godzilla podcast with Logan. Yeah, and I'm very, I'm very excited about finally. it. Finally. <laughs> I got completely caught up with Heisei era Godzilla. Took me forever because I'm a Showa era girl. So I know all those by heart. And of course, the new MonsterVerse movies. Uh, JC is not invited because he doesn't know anything about Godzilla. 
fucking I know nerd. The lizard. You fucking nerd. He's a kaiju. I know. I know. He he wins the fights sometimes, and he really doesn't like Japan. <laughs> no. Again, depends. <laughs> That's fair. Fair point. Sometimes, fair point. He, sometimes he saves Tokyo <laughs> while I also know, setting it on fire. I know the um. One moment. Uh there was the one movie. He's kind of like Benjamin Rush in that, like. He's trying to save you, but also kills you at the same time. And he also does not own a fucking cat. <laughs> I I know that the Godzilla from 1998 was the best one ever released. <sighs> okay. I'm, talking about I'm, the- I'm, mm. I'm muting JC now. <laughs> I'm muting JC. That's it. How do I, how do I mute? Where is he? Hold on. How do I mute him? Block. <laughs> only... The only movie there, in, he's muted. The only movie that in my entire life that I ever fell asleep at the movie theater. I was so pissed at that and fucking I movie. Was, and I was eight. <laughs> and it I was a lot older. Hold me. I was a lot older and I was still I was really pissed because I spent my hard earned money for that fucking movie. <laughs> All right, JC, you're back. I'll let me know. Your hate gives me power. I'm sure that it does. It fuels me. <laughs> but like literally at the end of Godzilla 2000. Yeah. The the woman's like, why does he keep saving us? And then right after that is a picture of him just blowing everything to shit. Like just with his fire <laughs> breath, just everything explodes. I was like, <laughs> what part of that looks like saving? That's what I'm saying. You're like, Godzilla is the Benjamin Rush of the world. Anyway, so yeah, we'll be on we'll be on that at some point. Just keep a lookout. And if you are a Godzilla fan, please go listen to that podcast. He he's gotten so much feedback for that podcast. It's a really cool thing that they're doing where instead of just talking about the movies, they're picking the creatures and getting really in depth with creature design how it stacks up against Godzilla during that particular film so it's not just like a summary of the film I like that because you know it, it's they a little bit different in, they getting into it yeah yeah like completely nerding out on kaiju this ain't your mama's Godzilla podcast no there you go we should do a promo for that <laughs> you should say that <laughs> holy shit <laughs> Logan Cord did a thing Logan hire me <laughs> hire you Pfft, dude i have to pay them what are you talking about i still owe them stuff Shh. <laughs> i kept telling you, i'm gonna send it i'm gonna send it i have like a stack of shit that needs to get sent to iowa it's not right i just yeah the fact that they live in iowa <sighs> yeah, i know right i feel yeah. really bad for them big goof <laughs> oh boy make new friends um anyway <laughs> We're doing really great with this. Yeah, welcome back, guys. We're pros. <laughs> Four years. Uh, Canals, man. Nobody wants dead. to work with us anymore. We ain't dead yet. Of course, I'm playing a character on Tales of Thorn, so I keep saying just go listen to that because it's great. <clears throat> Not because I'm in it. I It was great before that. I'm having a lot of fun with it. My dog decides to start playing with this squeaky toy now of all time. <laughs> oh, and we have not... As of the recording of this, we have not set up the actual date yet for when we're going to be on John Curley's podcast talking about the evidence that we found during our ghost investigation at the Franklin House. (laughs) Named after Ben Franklin. Hell yeah. (laughs) Woo. Brought it right back around to my favorite founding father. Hells yes. We did it, guys. Go follow us on all the socials, Instagram and Twitter while it's still around and Facebook. Doing a lot more on Facebook now, so check it out. A lot of those memes will also be on Facebook, too. They're not just on Instagram. I lied. We're also on Patreon, Mission Spooky. We've got levels $1, $3, and $5. $1 gets you archived bonus material. It gets you a shout out on the podcast. It might get you something else. We're, I have an idea we're working on. Uh, I mean, you get a lot at a dollar as it is already. Uh, $3 gets you new bonus 
uh, episodes we put out every month with Cord, where we used to do the States episodes. Those are now only available on Patreon, either as archive material or new material. You also get the stat block card and the art card for any of our cryptids that we create for Cord versus Cryptid. And at the $5 level, um, you basically are giving us your $5 to keep us going a little bit more. We still need to buy some equipment as we have figured out after our first investigation. <laughs> I want that damn cording thing. Yes. John sent me the link for what it is. And I was like, yes, those were boss. More importantly, I need more flashlights. <laughs> JC's going to be like a gunslinger in the West, but he's going to have freaking lights on. Yeah, yeah, just so many flashlights. And we are also working on, I don't know, see, I I probably will not be able to go anywhere this summer as far as a faraway location. But there is talk of a possible faraway location that we were invited to go with HAPS 2. So keep your fingers crossed, maybe JC oh, they're crossed. No. They are indeed crossed. Yeah. A little bit jelly because I really like to go to that one. But hey, you know what? I got mom duties. I can't help it. Yeah. You could. Bring, bring the kid you along. You could tell your Whatever. child. Or that. Yeah, bring him along. <laughs> oh my God, no. Get them started early. If you have any comments or questions about any of our previous episodes, you can just email us at missionspookypodcast, all one word, at gmail.com. We always love hearing from you guys. And uh, that's it. So taking us out once again is going to be Serpent Church from South Carolina. I think after you listen to that little bit of snippet there in the middle, they remind me a little bit of Slow Mo Sapiens. So if you like Slow Mo, you're probably going to really like uh, Serpent Church. Give them a listen. They also got some cool merchandise on their website. They do not have any of their music available on Bandcamp, but you can listen on Spotify and YouTube. And the song that we're playing again is called Wolves Plus Arrows. Equals yep. death. <laughs> Possibly, right? As always, stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. Bringing out an oldie from episode 31. Be the cryptids you want to be, you beautiful abominations. We have stickers to say that. I know. They have me on it. I love it. I bought one recently. Oh, oh you, I was excited. I thought it was like some other person. No, ah. it was me. I bought two stickers. Jeez I'm glad Louise. I could ruin your day. Yeah, whatever. Money. I was all excited. <laughs> By spending more money on the podcast, I'm glad I could ruin your day. Got him.
Oh, 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 oh,